Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Radar showing much of the activity southwest of San Antonio, but that is expected to change as we prepare for several rounds of rain. We'll check in with meteorologist Sarah Spivey coming up. Also coming up, gloved, masked, but not exactly for the pandemic. Police say he targeted and tied up pharmacists in robberies. The new video of that suspect released and one of the victims sharing his story with us tonight. And Fiesta kicks off in exactly one month. The Fiesta Commission recognizing a shift in the pandemic. Now they have a shift in their party plans. Plus inspectors giving us a peek behind the kitchen door. The unsavory discovery at one local restaurant coming up. But first, same robbery suspect, different pharmacies. Seguin police actively searching for a man they say robbed two local pharmacies at gunpoint in a five month period. In both of those cases, pharmacists were tied up and left to fend for themselves. The night team's Jaffney Gray with new video of the suspect and one pharmacist warning to others. The robber comes for a gun, order you to do whatever they want, and at the end, they tie you up uh, with some zit love and you're left uh, somewhere in the pharmacy. Seguin Pharmacy Manager Merlin Chawa Inga found himself in those very zip ties last December, tied up for several minutes before he could break free and get to a nearby business to call for help. It was very scary. That's something that's something that never happened to me. During that robbery, which happened around 9.45 a.m. in the 200 block of East Court Street, Seguin police say two men and a woman who acted as a lookout demanded cash and narcotics from Chaiwainga. They drove off in this dark color Chevrolet Suburban you see here. Fast forward nearly five months later and about four minutes down the road, 10-minute pharmacy was robbed at gunpoint here in the 200 block of Highway 123 bypass. The suspect, this man right here. Seguin police say the same man involved in the December robbery. This time, police say he acted alone, tying the pharmacist up with a rope before driving off in this white GMC Yukon XL. The suspect, again, getting away with cash and narcotics. It just means that those guys are around there looking for the next pharmacy to target and that they'll come back and each pharmacy has to be uh, waiting for them. Tawainga says since their December break-in, he's taken the extra steps to up his security measures. He highly recommends other pharmacies do the same while having a protocol in place. I won't be fully happy until those guys are caught. Jaffany Gray, KSAT 12 News. The Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers is offering a cash reward of up to $5,000 for information leading to an arrest on these cases. You are urged to call 1-877-403-TIPS. Turning now to the pandemic, today begins the one-month countdown until Fiesta. And our stats are in good standing. Our positivity rate remains below 3%. The seven-day rolling average, 161 COVID cases per day. The percentage of those fully vaccinated stands at 45%. That number takes all of the eligible children who are as young as 12 years old. And given how well the numbers are trending, Fiesta organizers are preparing to expect even bigger crowds. Just announced today, the Fiesta Commission says events will be open to 100% capacity. The night team's Patty Santos tells us it's because the community has been doing its part at getting the virus under control. My husband and I are now both fully vaccinated, so we're excited. We miss our chicken on the stick. Niosa is one of the things that I've always done. Everyone has their Fiesta favorites, and on June 17th, when Fiesta kicks off, everyone can enjoy them. Today, we have officially set occupancy for Fiesta at 100%. With more than 55% of the population having had at least one shot and two consecutive months of dropping infection rates, the Fiesta Commission and Metro Health says it's safe to have large gatherings outdoors. As long as people are smart about it, we can have Fiesta, it can be safe, and it can and it can happen in this kind of transitioning back to normal environment. The Fiesta Commission says masks will be optional for those fully vaccinated, but party at your own comfort level. We'll definitely still wear a mask because it's such a large crowd and we're still a little anxious. If you're in one of those Fiesta events where you're shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people, um, I would recommend you wear a mask, and that's consistent with what the CDC's guidance is. After a year of turmoil, it'll be nice to celebrate just a little. Hope people go and enjoy and and, and that they, they 
break uh, cascarons. And to continue the push for vaccinations, Metro Health will have 12 pop-up vaccination sites at Fiesta events, and they're going to target this 20 to 40-year-old demographics. You can find out more about the events on KSET.com. Steve, Isis. Thank you, Patty. We also want to tell you about a Fiesta-themed vaccine clinic happening this weekend. 900 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be made available. No appointment needed. It's going to be happening at 2600 Southwest Military Drive from 9 in the morning till 12 in the afternoon this Saturday. The event being presented by the Council Women of Districts 3, 4, and 5, and there will be free medals while supplies last. Well, taking a live look outside tonight, San Antonio remaining dry, but that is expected to change tomorrow. Miral to Sarah Spivey tracking tomorrow's forecast as well as some activity to the southwest tonight, Sarah. Yeah, that's right, Stephen Eces. While it was looking like in the overnight hours, we would have had the opportunity to see a round of robust thunderstorms. I'm happy to report that that's looking less likely in the overnight hours tonight, but that does not mean we are in the clear. In fact, a flash flood watch is in effect all the way until Thursday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. An additional two to six inches of rain is possible in all of these counties in green with pockets of more than six inches of rain possible. Now on the radar, as Stephen Eces were mentioning, there is still some activity to our south uh, west moving through Frio, Demet, and Zavala counties. A lot of lightning out near Carrizo Springs and near Pearsall. While these are producing a lot of lightning, they are not severe, but they could have some small pea-sized hail with them, as well as some gusty winds. So Dilly, Catula, Katarina, get ready for some very heavy rain. As we uh, look a little bit into the future, the key points that I want to point out before we get into the forecast later on is that it will not rain 24 seven through Thursday. There are going to be rounds of heavy rainfall. So when it does rain, it will be very heavy and that is the risk of flash flooding. So we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead coming up. Thank you, Sarah. A night beat update in the Cameron Prescott case. Tonight we've learned a settlement reached in a federal lawsuit. Six year old Cameron Prescott inside his mobile home back in 2017 when Bear County deputies shot at a fraud suspect. Her name was Amanda Jones. She was killed. So was the little boy. Some of those bullets went through the mobile home, killing Prescott. Records show an agreement was reached back on May 5th between Prescott's parents, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar and four deputies involved in the shooting. A relative for Amanda Jones also named as a party in the federal document. Court documents go on to say, quote, upon completion of the settlement agreement and disbursement of the checks, the parties will file a joint dismissal of the lawsuit, end quote. Details on that settlement not publicly released tonight, including an amount of those checks. We'll keep you updated if we find out. It, it will change your life. It, it's not just a child's life. It changes yours. A Bandera couple is making a desperate plea to open your homes to teens in the foster care system. The couple has been watching the crisis unfold and say they can't bear to watch so many children in need of a home be ignored. The night team's Patty Santos with their foster child story in hopes it encourages at least one person to open their heart and help. Just days away from graduating high school and weeks from starting his career in the Army, Gabriel Helton is grateful for everything. You just learn to appreciate the things that you have. And everyone. Two years ago, he was placed at the home of Jennifer Green and Gordon Cook in Bandera. Gabriel was 15 when he and his seven adopted siblings entered the system. Some of us, more than others, just being malnourished with food in improper sleeping places and eventually CPS just showed up at our door. They need to know that there is people out there that do care. The couple was in the process of opening up their campsite business to foster kids when they felt a calling in their heart to do more and open up their home. And as we did more research, it was we found out nobody wanted teenagers. But for the couple with grown children, teenagers were easy and a perfect match. They're really fun and they keep you up on all the latest technology and 
in their home, Gabriel has thrived, but most importantly, he's had a chance to be a teenager. He says now more than ever, the foster care system needs homes like this. My sister at one point, she was living in a CPS office, just in someone's office space. The children that are without placement that are sleeping in offices and hotels, about 90% of them are teenagers. The additional ones are younger kiddos that are sibling groups. In Bear County, about 30 children are in need of placement. SJRC says teens are the hardest to place, but the most in need of stability. What they really need is families. And yes, they can most definitely become successful, healed adults that then stop the cycle and raise their own beautiful families. And take it from someone who knows just how much family and home means. I just wish there were more homes for older kids because they're not all bad. Some of them have their problems, but they're not all bad. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Agencies like St. Jude's Ranch for Children say they will provide support and training to anyone who wants to open their home to become a foster parent. Foster kids are also in need of mentors. You can read more about Gabriel's story on KSAT.com. Well, meantime, the defenders are looking into the foster care system tomorrow in Bear County. The commitment to carry out community-based care here collapsing less than three years after it was put into place. The defenders give us a look at the rocky road ahead tomorrow on the night beat. It's still hit tonight on the night beat though. Several rounds of rain expected to hit San Antonio throughout the week. You're all just Sarah Spivey. You're keeping an eye on the work week coming up. And an inspection at this West Side restaurant finding problems with some food and the plates it would be served on. We're getting a look behind the kitchen door coming up next on the night beat. They started out with a high score. Now one West Side eatery is seeing that score plummet as we move out of a pandemic. Food stash on a trash can just one of the problems in its recent inspection. We were able to get a peek behind the kitchen door at Ginza Ramen Pokey and Boba over on 1604 near 151. Metro Health shows they had a score of 97 back in December of 2019. Pretty good. That score dropped in February of last year, then again in July of 2020, and now in March of this year, they're sitting at a score of 74. Still passing, but not by much. The inspection revealed raw shrimp not only found sitting at room temperature, but also sitting on top of a trash can. Their restaurants, the restaurant also received demerits for dishes that were not properly sanitized. The business will need to undergo another inspection. Our coverage behind the kitchen door continues online. We have a list of this week's scores on KSAT.com. Well, city councilman and a prominent criminal defense attorney scoring, squaring off over a letter in what the attorney called, quote, an attempt to influence a sitting judge, end quote. It centers around this crash in 2019 in which 35-year-old Tito Bradshaw was struck and killed as he rode his bicycle. 69-year-old Linda Mason was charged with un intoxication manslaughter. Last week, city councilman Manny Belay sent letters to the district attorney and Judge Jennifer Pena, urging that they, quote, strongly consider insisting that the defendant serves a meaningful jail sentence, end quote. In a letter released today, attorney Pat Hancock, who represents Mason, wrote, quote, I was disturbed by the tone and intended purpose of the letters, end quote. He accused Belize of inappropriately attempting to influence a sitting judge. A hearing in the case originally set for today has been reset. All right, let's take a look at live cam tonight. And this is a picture, okay, at 5 o'clock tonight, this very same picture, bright and sunny. Right. 6 o'clock, ominous clouds. Yeah. 10 o'clock, looks like there's still clouds out there, but it's yeah. not raining. It's cloudy and it's not raining in San Antonio, but it is raining to the south and to the west of San Antonio. And over the next several days, we're going to have rounds of thunderstorms that kind of set up a lot like this storm complex southwest of San Antonio. Let's check it out. You can see that areas like Carrizo Springs, uh, areas in Dimmick County and Frio County getting a lot of lightning. Catula seeing some lightning there off to the west. There is a lot of heavy 
heavy rain with this system as well. Look at all of these reds here from Carrizo Springs down 83 to Katarina up to Dilly and up to the Pearsall area as well. This is a great example of the rounds of rain that will be moving through San Antonio over the next uh, couple of days, especially tomorrow and Wednesday. Look at these precipitation rainfall rates of up to three to four inches an hour. Uh, these are very healthy rain producers. Even a couple of the showers and storms that we got around San Antonio today produced a quick inch of rain like up near Canyon Lake. Uh, let's go ahead and look a little bit further up to the north here. It does look like this shower may skirt the south part of Bear County, but it is moving to the east and you can see that there are some showers in so uh, South Atascosa County and Northern Live Oak County. If I put a tracker on this, it's going to continue to head off to the east and the Pleasanton area could see some pretty loud thunderstorms right at around 1140, so just before midnight. But this storm complex does look like it's going to miss San Antonio to the south. Uh, but if you've been thinking we're going to get rain, you're right. We're, we have several days here of a very active weather pattern, and I'll show you that when we take a wider view here of the state of Texas. Throughout the day today, we've seen rounds and rounds of these lines of thunderstorms, these complexes of thunderstorms. These are very tricky to forecast timing for because what these storms do is they move in kind of random ways and they create these outflow boundaries which spark off more storms. Those outflow boundaries kind of act as little cool fronts that bring more storms to the area. More on those outflow boundaries in a little bit, but those are going to be around for a while because of this big upper level low. Through at least a good portion of Thursday, we're going to have have these rounds of storms moving through. Let me take you through the high res future cast again. Tonight is looking fairly quiet in San Antonio. At least the overnight hours are even for the morning commute tomorrow. I think rain uh, is going to be fairly scattered in nature, so it should be pretty good for the morning commute. But during the day, look, here's one of those rounds of thunderstorms that I just showed you on that wide map of Texas. This has a very high probability of releasing one of those outflow boundaries and starting more storms around San Antonio tomorrow at some point during the day. Even though this computer model doesn't show much around San Antonio, that can be deceiving because again, these storms are a little bit random in nature and they're going to continue on Wednesday as well. So heavy rain in the forecast. That's the biggest concern for us uh, tomorrow. Pretty much a 60% chance for scattered showers and storms. South Southeast winds at 10 to 20 and will only be in the 70s for the day. Not only do we have a good chance for storms tomorrow, but also on Wednesday, a higher chance 80% and then we'll continue to see a chance for scattered storms through Saturday and even into Sunday. It's a small possibility, but our focus over the next seven days is going to be the risk for up to six inches of rain in spots uh, with some pockets of up to 10. Not everybody is going to see six inches of rain, but those folks that do, it's going to lead to flooding issues for many people. Very active and ever changing forecast. So keep up with us on air online in our KSAT Weather Authority app. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, if there was ever a time for the Spurs to put together a two-game winning streak, <laughs> now would be the time, yeah, Greg. Because if you want to get into the playoffs, you got to win not once but twice in the play-in tournament. When we come back, we'll get you ready for game one of that play-in tournament when they face the Memphis Grizzlies on the road, where they have beaten them before this season. And Justin High School names a new girls basketball coach coming up. If the Spurs are going to make the playoffs and avoid their second straight season of failing to make the postseason, they'll have to win two games on the road in the NBA's new play-in tournament. It's after they lost to the Phoenix Suns in back-to-back -back games at home to finish the regular season at 33-39 and 39, and in the 10th position of the Western Commerce. After the Memphis Grizzlies lost to the Golden State Warriors, the Grizzlies dropped to the ninth position. will now host the Spurs on Wednesday with the winner advancing to another playing game and the loser season coming to an end. During the course of the regular season, the Spurs beat the Grizzlies to tip off the COVID shortened 72 game schedule on December the 23rd in Memphis at 131 to 119, but then lost by double digits in both games at home, falling on February the 1st by 31 points, which is their second worst home loss of the season. The Spurs do have a winning record on the road at 19 and 17, better than at home, which is 14 and 22, a first in franchise history. We've definitely been through a lot as a group, um, as a coaching side, as, a, as an organization, obviously, too. But, um, you know, we're, we're here at the end of the day. 
uh, in the tenth spot and, and a chance, um, you know, to, to keep on playing on postseason. All right, here's the matchup in the play-in tournament. The Lakers will host the Warriors. They're seven, and the Warriors are eight. The Spurs will be on the road at number 10, facing the Memphis Grizzlies. The winner of Memphis and the Spurs will face the loser of the Golden State Warriors and Lakers. Tim Duncan was passionate, humble, and funny in his 12-minute acceptance speech when the five-time NBA champion was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame on Saturday night. His presenter was former teammate and Hall of Famer himself, David Robinson, who Duncan teamed with to win the Spurs franchise's first two NBA titles in 1999-2003, and the two that formed the rest of the big three to help win three more titles in 2005, 2007, and 2014. Mon Ginobili, Tony Parker, I can't wait to see you guys up here and for me not to be up here. <laughs> uh, it was an honor sharing the court with you guys. Thank you um, for everything. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your brotherhood. Thank you uh, for all the experiences that we shared on that court. Thank you. And just yesterday, the class of 2021 for the Hall of Fame was announced, and it includes the late Cotton Fitzsimmons, who coached the Spurs from 1984 to 1986. After nearly 60 years of calling games, it always included the iconic, yes, Marv Albert is retiring at the end of the NBA playoffs. Albert, who turns 80 next month, has covered everything from the Super Bowl to hockey, but is best known for his calls as a play-by-play -play announcer for the Knicks and TNT. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The biggest question mark for the Houston Texans right now is who will start a quarterback this season? But well, with all the legal issues veteran Deshaun Watson is facing moving forward, one reason why the Texans used their first pick in the NFL draft to select Stanford quarterback Davis Mills. Even though he hasn't played as much college football as other rookies, new head coach David Culley was asked for his early assessment of Mills. We love all the tangibles that he has. Uh, uh, he's a prototype NFL quarterback, uh, and we feel good to have him. He's smart. Uh, he can make all the throws, and we feel good and feel fortunate that we were able to get him when we got him. All right, celebration at Holy Cross High School next. Judson High School has a new girls basketball coach. She's Christina Camacho, who led Veterans Memorial to two state tournament appearances in two different classes in 4A and 5A finals. That's according to the Judson Girls Basketball Twitter account tonight. She replaces Treva Corrales, who gave up coaching to become the Judson School District's new athletic director, replacing Mike Miller, who is retiring. Big celebration at Holy Cross High School as the school finally got a chance to recognize her softball and cheer teams for championships along with Xavier Garza for bringing home the gold and taps track and field meets. The Knights softball team beat Bay Area Christian to win their first state title 10 to nothing while their cheer team took their first state title since Taps made it a team sport even though they've already run numerous NCAA championships. And congratulations Xavier Garza brought home the gold in the 110 and 300 hurdles. Feels good, you know, at least showing off, bringing home like state titles back to the school and bringing our school out there. It's truly an honor. Ever since I was in seventh grade, I always looked up to my captains and being a captain today and be able to talk about the championships that we won to the whole entire school is just truly something grateful and that I'll remember for my whole entire life. This means a lot to me, um, especially since I did this for my upperclassmen. They mean a lot to me and especially going into state as a the final four as a freshman i was kind of looking forward to winning state this year it's super excited for this next season to come and the after that our team's so great and i'm glad to be a part of holy cross you know because of covid they haven't been able to really celebrate much of these championships together yeah. but now as that's easing up now they can go back if you will and help celebrate those moments well and it's obvious they have a lot to celebrate at sure, holy cross sure do <laughs> thanks Chris. one is nice yeah we'll be right back Quite a bit of lightning and heavy rain for Pearsall, Catula. Eventually, these will move into the Pleasanton area, but they'll stay south of San Antonio. And looking ahead to the forecast, widespread storms are possible tomorrow and especially on Wednesday. Flash flood watches in effect until 1 p.m. Thursday, so we've got to look out for flash flooding for quite a bit of time. Busy weather week. Yes. Thanks, Sarah. GMSA at 430. Good night.